In this six part video series, Future Music Magazine is teaming up with Steinberg to explore creative sampling and instrument creation. Throughout these episodes, we're going to use Steinberg's powerful synth sampler hybrid instrument, Hallion 6, to walk you through the full spectrum of synthesis, sampling and sound design techniques. Unlike other samplers, Hallion 6 gives you the tools to create new instruments that can be distributed free of charge and used in Hallion Sonic SE. So we'll dig deep into Hallion 6 and show you how you can customise your own instrument entirely from scratch, including interface components such as buttons, sliders, that kind of thing. In each video, we'll create our own instrument and then we'll give it to you to download for free. Um, but if you don't own Hallion 6, don't worry because you can use Hallion Sonic SE, which is free from the Steinberg website. Hi, Cy and Joe here. We're now on episode four where we're going to be looking at multi-sampling. Um, I don't know if you've noticed this whacking great big synth, this, the classic CS80 right in front of me. We're going to multi-sample this. And Joe, tell us, why do we do multi-sampling? What's the point? Um, well, we could sample a single note yeah. from the synth, um, load that into the sampler, play that across the keyboard. Um, but the further away you play from the note's original pitch, um, introduces artifacts, just doesn't sound quite as natural. So um, multi-sampling is basically taking a sample of many different notes, um, placing those on the correct keys, uh, mapping them across the keyboard. Mm -hmm. And then, then you avoid that kind of weird sound when you're pitching a sample too right, far away yeah. from itself. Okay. So, so it's sort of the, the most realistic snapshot, snapshot you can get of a, um, okay. of a sound. Which is exactly why I want to do that with this, because is the work of art that it is. We want to kind of, you know, get that as pristine as we can. So show exactly. us how we can do that in um, Hallion 6. Well, in Hallion 6, uh, it's, there's this new feature called the sample recorder. Uh -huh. um, so when you're generally with other soft samplers, when you're multi-sampling, um, it's a bit long-winded. You have to sort of record all the audio into a door, chop it up, sort of map it all manually. Um, but this is great because you can actually just record audio straight in into the sampler itself. So if you just hit a key, you can see here on the input, we're receiving the signal straight into the sample recorder. Right, and so, we can adjust the gain of that with the... Yeah, I can set yeah. the input gain yeah. and uh, raise that a bit. Yeah. Um, and the other great thing about uh, recording multi-samples with the sample recorder is the fact that um, we can automatically set it up so that when, when our notes come in, they will automatically be mapped to the correct keys, um, right. you know, named correctly. Um, yeah. So it's, it just makes the process really easy, yeah. as, as we'll see. So um, firstly, it's good to set up a few uh, things in the options uh, section, just to make sure our recordings uh, are as good as possible. So if I set the auto normalize to minus three, then it will normalize all our sounds. Yeah, okay. Um, so now trigger. 
manual uh, is the default, but if we go to audio threshold for start and stop, this means that um, it will receive the audio and it will start and stop recording for each note. So, um, so yeah, we, d we don't have to do anything. We can just sit here and uh, it will yeah, automatically yeah. record the correct notes in the right place. Um, so yeah, let's just set things up. Uh, probably do these to about minus 40, say. Should do. I'll leave it at that. Um, now, uh, this mode here. Oh, I'll just just a quick one. Um, we've got this set to input. So this is uh, this is receiving the audio input that we've set up here. Oh yeah, sure. Um, the interface. Yeah. But we can also record Hallian's uh, master output or one of its thirty-two channels oh, so back some, into itself. Get some resampling going on. And yeah, you can do that if yeah. you so wish. Um, uh -huh. We'll keep this on input now because obviously we're recording the external signal. Um, what we can do here, if I set sample mode to auto next, okay, um, it will automatically record uh, when when we receive signal. It will keep recording each note. Okay. So I won't have to keep punching record each time. So effectively, if you're on your own, you could be at the other end of the studio, playing, sampling your instrument. You don't have to keep running back to operate. You can just, it's all automatic. Exactly. It's brilliant. Yeah, if you set things up properly, it makes it really, really yeah. easy. So um, what we'll do here, also we've got this mapping. So this will auto, this defines how these notes we record in will be mapped across the keyboard. So if we set white keys, so when you're playing, if you just play white keys, then it will map them. Just the white keys. And it will know, know to map them in the correct place. Brilliant. Uh, fill gaps, fill centered. So it will, any, any uh, notes we don't sample, it will fill those gaps. So I think we're ready to go. Um, Actually, I'll just set this uh, the first key here to C1 because okay, we can start that's from C1. Start at the bottom. We'll go we'll go up the keyboard. Work our way at the top. Right. So once I punch record, it's over to you. And I can just crack on. Yeah. Just make sure you leave silence in between each note, just so it it stops. Yeah. And then it gets ready to start again. Okay. And then we uh, we should be away. Go for so, it. So go ahead. Fantastic. So that's all, all the keys done. And as you can see here, there we go. It's uh, assigned them all to the correct keys. It's given them all the correct names. Great. Um, so if we go over here to the mapping area, we can see. They're all there. They're all mapped. There we go. And there you can play them. Automatically. I can, yes. So the old CS is playing on the new CS. Great. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're just using this as a as a controller keyboard for now. Yeah. But yeah, we've got the uh, and then obviously uh, you know you can go in, you can add effects uh, like you as you you normally would. Mm -hmm. um, just go down here and you know, I can uh, throw on a reverb or something. And 
you know, just process in the, in the normal way as you would. But um, yeah, it's a really easy way to just, you know, any hardware synth you've got. Yeah. Um, you know, and also um, the CS80 doesn't have MIDI. No, of course. No. But if you are using a synth with MIDI, um, you can also set things up so that um, Hallian uh, recognises the MIDI note you're using to trigger the synth. Right, yeah. So and then it will automatically map it. So you yeah. can do it that way. Did you makes, set it up? So you don't even have to do it in order if you don't want no. to. You can just set Start it up to do it. Hitting so. keys and it'd be fine, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I've, I've always found multi sampling a, a real pain in the backside, to be honest, but this is really... Uh, it's made it so much really easier. It really helps to make it a lot easier, yeah. So... Uh, means that you can do more sampling for the short amount of time you're likely to get hold of one of these vintage synths that exactly. no one's got. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do a lot more of that while yeah, we've got this. Definitely. <laughs>